Now, what are real-time embedded systems? Um, well, they are a special purpose computer system and uh, they often function in real time uh, and they are um, embedded within or on uh, physical devices. Uh, they usually uh, they usually a, spe a special purpose uh, computer system rather than a general purpose computer system. And uh, they, they're quite often found in many of the common devices uh, available today. Um, although in, in some ways when we start talking about um, an iPhone as having an embedded system or being an embedded system, an iPhone, as we'll see later, is a, is a fairly powerful kind of a, a computer in its own right and is not quite the same as um, a control system for an industrial valve or something of that nature. So a lot of the uh, systems we have and a lot of the, the things that we're talking about are things like um, control systems for vehicles. They frequently have um, embedded systems in them. A lot of industrial control systems either have or are uh, embedded, um, embedded systems. Um, increasingly we're getting around to uh, things like um, smart cities, smart meters, things like that where they, they are employing special purpose uh, computer systems as part of their either um, uh, sensing uh, the environment or reporting the environment or controlling uh, the environment. Now, the, the reason, I guess in some ways, the reason why they're a little bit different is because the real-time embedded systems arose from the electrical and mechanical engineering uh, domain rather than the computing domain. Now, they have always been ever since there have been electrical systems or mechanical systems, there's been some sort of controls. Uh, brakes, steering, um, and as soon as we got the steam engine, we had the need for some mechanism to govern its speed. And so we got governors, uh, feedback mechanisms to, to ensure they didn't uh, go out of, out of uh, control. Um, and uh, things like, I guess you could talk about a, a railway system as having um, a signaling system to control uh, which way the railways point. Uh, telecommunication systems all, all had uh, some form of control. Uh, these may well have been implemented as uh, levers or, or um, you know, rotating governors. Uh, or, as I've seen, the older railway people um, examining the old switchyards with a great deal of uh, nostalgia. Here they had uh, physical relays that, that clicked and, and switched and there's a smell of ozone and blue sparks about, the, uh, sparks about the place and they thought it was wonderful. But the important point about the origins is that um, these control systems have arisen out of the engineering domain and carry with them all of the professional expectations of the engineering domain as opposed to um, arising from the computing programming uh, domain where they would carry the expectations of the programming domain. Uh, engineers tend to be a great deal more careful than programmers. Uh, so this, is, this, is, this has uh, driven some of the development of control systems and still, uh, still matters a lot. Now control systems, there are we talk about embedded systems, we talk about control systems. A control system is not necessarily embedded. A control system is a computer system that's, that's built specifically to control something. It could be a general purpose uh, computer. Um, in fact, I've been involved in, in um, building control systems. It happened to be for a railway yard. And it was built on a couple of um, personal computers. So there was nothing special purpose about those computers, it just happened to be a real-time control system. The embedded systems, you find them pretty much everywhere. In consumer electronics, um, in uh, the glass cockpit of airplanes, you find a lot of them there. Um, increasingly in cars, um, I think it's, it's uh, reported that 40% of the new functionality of a car is uh, driven by software. Um, cars have a lot of embedded system, embedded, yeah, embedded systems in them. Medical devices, uh, the famous ones are the uh, heart, tra heart um, pacemaker and the um, bionic ear, and people are working on bionic eye, uh, other things as well. 
Um, telecommunications is a big user of uh, embedded systems. So in summary, an embedded systems is a specialized, special purpose computer system. Uh, it usually has limited functionality. Um, is not a general purpose computer. Um, sometimes they're embedded. Control systems are sometimes embedded and sometimes they're not. Um, more devices are likely to include embedded systems in future. And this is simply because the size of them is coming down, the power of them is going up, the cost of them is coming down, and this brings more things into into play. We can we can start contemplating, um, as I mentioned before, smart cities um, and a whole lot of things, uh, including uh, one recent application was to put uh, chips on the back of honeybees to find out where they went. Um, I don't think they're quite a control system, but it illustrates the, the uh, level that we're starting to get to. So there will be a greater demand for embedded systems as time goes on. Uh, they won't go away simply because computers are getting uh, more powerful and um, uh, smaller. So um, all that means is that we can, we can start moving down to smaller and smaller things.